Okay, so I want to tell you a little bit about laser resurfacing. So a lot of times I get the question about smoker's lines, the lines just above the lip that tend to, as you get older, stay there even when you're not making movement. And even worse than that, sometimes people just get textural problems in their skin, and that can be very aging, even in the absence of um, the need for filler or volume or facelift. If you have uh, those lines around your mouth, um, it, it could make people look a little bit older, and it's something that's very common for people to ask me about. And oftentimes, they're coming in to ask me about it, putting Botox around their mouth or putting filler in this area above the lip. And I find myself turning a lot of people away because putting Botox above the lip is not my favorite thing to do, nor is it the most effective treatment for lines above your lips because in order to prevent them from coming completely, your lip would have to stop moving, and that is not an attractive, it's a very weird looking thing. So the best we can do with Botox is to make it a little bit softer because you don't want to stop the movement around your mouth, but any movement you have is gonna to continue to make the creases happen. So it's not the best treatment. It's also not FDA approved, so anybody doing it is doing it off label. And that's fine, I think, in certain people, a very little bit, a subtle amount is okay with the right person. But it's certainly not a universal treatment. It's not something that you could come in and say, I don't like my smoker's lines, can you give me some Botox around my mouth? That's not the way it works. The other thing is sometimes people want to put filler in that area to plump the, the area up and fill the lines in. And again, in a select group of people, that's an okay thing to do, and you could get some nice results in certain select candidates, but again, manage expectations, because if you fill something up a lot until it's smooth, it's gonna look too big. And I see people walking around all the time with these big, huge upper lip, uh, um, these big, huge upper lips that look really terrible and awkward and fake and they, they don't move normally and movement is is part of, of what your face needs to do. If you're sitting perfectly still and you're not talking, you could have a smooth upper lip but the minute you start talking and it looks like one unit, uh, people are going to know you did something, they're going to translate that in their brain as looking strange and they're right, it does. So uh, to that end, the go-to for me when people have textural issues around their mouth, smoker's lines, deep, big pores, and things like that, are uh, resurfacing laser treatments. And um, that's what I encourage people to do because it works to completely change the surface of your skin, particularly around your mouth. It's a big deal for people, and it can be transformative and Honestly, in my practice, I think it's the closest thing to a miracle that I could deliver to people. Um, there are a couple of ways to approach laser resurfacing, and the most kind of awe-inspiring one is a full-field ablative laser. Um, we do this in one session. I have a Cyton Erbium laser, and what that does is it targets water at the base of the skin and causes heat which um, takes off the top layers of the skin all the way down to the depth of where those wrinkles are. And I think of it as almost like sandpapering the skin. And I could do a treatment in one session and completely transform uh, the quality, texture, not so much the tone, meaning the color of the skin, but the texture of the skin could be completely rejuvenated in one treatment. The Downside to that is that there's quite a bit of recovery uh, to that treatment, which um, I have had some patients film their day-to-day -day recovery from these procedures and are happy to share those uh, recovery videos with you so that you could see ahead of time what that recovery process is like. I could say that even though it is a tough recovery for those people who do these full ablative lasers, I think universally everybody is happy they did it and tells me that they would do it again. Um, for the people who don't want to go through the big recovery, 
there are other ways that we could kind of approach the same effect. One of them is by taking the same laser and instead of going very deep down into the skin, we go a little bit more superficial. So the Cyton laser is unique in that it's tunable, meaning that I could set the depth at which I peel the skin to anything I want. So I could set it anywhere from four micrometers deep to a thousand, <coughs> pardon me, a thousand micrometers, and then I could apply that to the skin in different areas and get very different results. So four micrometers deep is about the thickness of a piece of paper. That is gonna give you almost like a microdermabrasion that you would get in a med spa, but it's gonna be a little bit better because it applies heat in addition to the resurfacing and taking off that top dead skin layer. That's a nano laser peel. If we go down to a 50 micrometer depth, we're talking about a micro laser peel where your downtime and recovery is gonna be a couple of days of being red. You might get some peeling of the skin. And then the more deep I go, the more um, result you're gonna get with erasing those fine lines and wrinkles. If you go, the deeper you go, the more recovery time you're gonna get. But we can take a series of thinner peels, meaning if I use the laser and I peel around your mouth down to 100 micrometers, you may not get that miracle result all in one treatment, but each time I peel to that level, the effect is cumulative. So you can have a series of five treatments and have the same result as one treatment where I do 500 micrometers. You could do five treatments of 100 micrometers and add a cumulative effect of getting that full peel. So another way we can approach it is that instead of doing a full field ablative laser where I wipe out the whole top layer of the skin, I could do something called a fractionated treatment. And this is my halo laser. And this is the laser that has very minimal downtime, could be used several times a year, but it takes the same laser technology that I use for a full laser ablative procedure and it fractionates it, meaning it turns it into little dots, so or micro channels. So essentially you're taking the same thing and you're allowing the laser to leave behind normal skin in between your treated area to repopulate so that the recovery on it is a whole lot quicker. Um, you're not gonna have the miracle results of a full field ablation, but again, if you do a series of halo lasers over the course of a year or years and you use it as your maintenance program, you ultimately will get to that level. I mean, if you think of painting a wall, you could either paint a wall with a roller and you'll get it all done in one and it'll be a great result. Or you, somebody could give you a pencil and tell you you have to fill the wall in with little polka dots. Eventually you'll fill in the whole wall if you do it, but it's just gonna take you longer and it's gonna be less efficient. But that's okay because efficiency is not the end game for everybody. Some, some people don't have the time or downtime. So in that case, a halo laser is a wonderful treatment. Some people don't have a bad enough problem to warrant having um, the full ablative laser. And for those people, I say, go into the halo laser where it's more of a maintenance program. Um, the downtime on halo laser is about four to five days where your skin feels a little bit like sandpaper. Um, the, about 10% of people swell after a halo laser, so um, you have to be ready for that. Usually you'll have the same response to it once you've had it done once. The first time you have a halo, I would give myself four days away from um, any important event or public speaking or anything like that so that you know how you react specifically to it. And then going forward, we can plan on it because some people just react just fine and could go to work the next day. I certainly do. I do about three halo lasers on myself a year to keep my skin looking nice. So there are those options for those resurfacing lasers. There's a lot of different ways we can combine treatments. I could do a full face halo laser and boost around the mouth with a micro laser peel if your problem is the texture of the skin around your mouth and we could pair it in all different ways. I can even do a um, broadband light or photo facial which is gonna address the tone issues like the brown pigment and the red rosacea type problems. I can compare that 
I can pair that laser with a resurfacing laser. So you start by hitting out all those brown tones and then you come back and do a resurfacing. Whichever way um, we do it, we will customize the plan to your specific needs, come up with a treatment plan that may consist of a few treatments in series, and we'll do really what's best for you as an individual because none of this is one size fits all. Everybody's an individual and we have to do what's best for you and then follow it up with good skin care.